Hey everyone, Tank and Sun here. In a recent video, I tackled the question of if War Thunder is pay to win. Well, in this video, I'm tackling a related question that is almost the exact opposite, but in reality is fairly similar. Is War Thunder really free to play? I'll go over what is free in the game, what isn't free, some stats, including my own stats, and more in an attempt to hopefully shine some light on this issue and tell you whether or not you can get by in War Thunder without paying a dime or if you need to eventually give the snail money to progress in game. That said, let's get into it. So in order to define what is free in game, it might be easier to go over what isn't free, or at least what you will typically pay for with real money. You can buy premium time, Battle Pass, Premium Vehicles, Crew Slots, Convertible RP, Boosters, Instant Module Upgrades, Decals slash Decorations including Bushes, Vehicle Talismans, Marketplace Items, Key to Open Loot Boxes, Event Stars, and Silver Lions if you want to purchase them rather than earn them. Now most of these are either cosmetic or ride the line of being cosmetic such as decals and decorations. Heck, even some premium vehicles like the M18 Black Cat Hellcat are more or less carbon copies of their tech tree brethren already in game. To this point, many premium vehicles are simply cosmetic variations of vehicles available in the regular tech tree and will not give a player a combat advantage if you buy them. Aside from the rare premium that might give some sort of advantage in battle, as I described again in my most recent video about pay to win, the main benefit of premium vehicles in-game is to assist in tech tree progression via Silver Lion and RP boosters attached to the vehicle. Aside from the different gameplay mechanics that some premium vehicles might offer, like with the T114 or the Brumbar, they exist for the player to get farther in-game faster than they would without. This is much the same with premium time, except that premium time, in effect, makes all of your vehicles into premium vehicles in that it has silver lined and RP boosters that apply to all vehicles in normal matches and further boost the booster effects already available on premium vehicles. This said, on the surface, you don't need premium time, premium vehicles, or really anything else to progress, as you simply need RP and silver lines of which are earned by playing matches. These features that one pays for, including battle pass boosters and more, simply give you more of what you need and make it easier to progress. However, one must examine if it is impossible or at least very difficult to progress once the rewards from unboosted gameplay start becoming less than the cost of playing the game, such as the cost of buying vehicles, repairing vehicles, filling ammo, and more. Without premium time, I would have nowhere near the amount of silver lines needed to purchase all of the vehicles I currently own, and I own most of the American and German air and ground tech trees. Even with a 75% or so overall PvP rating, and over an 80% rating in recent months in arcade, yes, I do play arcade sometimes, I would not have nearly the funds necessary to break even when considering the purchase of vehicles, ammo, and repairs, and I like to not wait around for free repairs most of the time. Even when considering the various things that can aid you such as wagers and boosters, you are likely to not have enough golden eagles and silver lions to break even. Very rarely, War Thunder might throw you a bone and give you a free premium with a login reward or if you work for it through war bonds or even through the free battle pass rewards, which will certainly give you an edge when it comes to earning your keep in game, but will not necessarily push you to become profitable, so to speak. Speaking of free battle pass rewards, you can currently earn the F2G 1 Super Corsair, of which is a mid to high tier premium for the Americans, and also upwards of 400,000 Silver Lions without paying a single dime for War Thunder. You can also earn through War Bonds lower level premiums as well. These however only place a dent in the cost of playing War Thunder, as those 400,000 Silver Lions from Battle Pass simply cover the expense of paying for one high level tier 4 vehicle and crew training, and that's if you play the game consistently enough to earn all of those free silver lines. Before Battle Pass, it was even more difficult. Once you add in repair costs, especially for heavy bombers, you're in the red again. And now a word from our sponsor, me. Just wanted to ask if you guys could like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video as it really helps with the algorithms. Thanks. Now that said, back to the video. Let's consider the most average player in the game. Someone with exactly a 50% win rate and who gets consistently right in the middle of the end game result, meaning that he or she scores the median point total of his team's scores in every single match. If you're considering Golden Eagle wagers, that player might get, if he or she is lucky, 100 Golden Eagles at most per Golden Eagle wager. If his or her skill and luck remains to be as average as ever. As we all know, wagers are bad luck generators. 
So more likely than not, this will not hold. Even I, with my high win rate and lofty stats in Arcade, struggle to get beyond 100 GE threshold with the Golden Eagle wagers, largely because of the two-part requirement that they have, and that you need to earn both wins and kills. The kills are, for the most part, not so much of an issue for people, as you are likely to get at least one kill in each match, especially when players are everywhere, as they are in Arcade. It's the wins that gets tricky because if there's one thing War Thunder teaches all of us, it's that we can never expect to be helped and we can never expect our team to have any level of competence and thus cannot expect to win. Further, with Silver Lion wagers, specifically the Battle Victory wager where the only requirement is to win, goes up to 250,000 Silver Lions, but you need to win 10 matches without losing 3. That's a total of 12 matches max that you can play if you win 10 and lose 2, meaning that you need over an 83% win rate to achieve this. Those 250,000 Silver Lions, by the way, are only enough to purchase a single lower BR rank 4 vehicle without paying for crew training or anything else, and that's if you win them all. A more likely scenario is where you win 3 and lose 3, leaving you with 50,000 Silver Lions instead of the max of 250,000, which means that you can buy and crew some tier 2 vehicles all while using a wager that is hard to come by. Even the wagers that are more under your control, such as the Destroy 5 Units wager, only give a max of 100,000 Silver Lions, and that's if you get 5 plus kills in each match. To be honest, for me in mid-tier German Air Arcade, this is like giving me free money, but it isn't that easy for most, especially for those who don't play modes with such an abundance of enemies. That 100,000 Silver Lions likely won't get far anyways. My net profit in Silver Lions from all of my years of playing this game, considering all the premium time, premium vehicles, and all other purchases I've ever made in War Thunder is just over 7.5 million Silver Lions as of the recording of this video. That's enough for me to buy a few top tier vehicles right now, but that's it. Literally after over 6,850 matches, I only have a total profit of 7.5 million Silver Lions, and that's with all the bonuses that I play with. With the luck of being good at this game, and with playing with a good squadron that when I do play with them, I win over 80% of my matches. For the average player, especially in realistic, these numbers are simply not possible. Even still, with the amount of silver lines that I have, and some of those do come from purchasing beginners packs that have 120,000 silver lines in each of them, I've only made an excess of just over 1,094 silver lines per match in profit when considering repairs, ammo, crew training, new vehicle purchases, and all other silver line expenditures, even when considering the sales from War Thunder on vehicles in the regular tech tree. If there were no sales on regular tech tree vehicles that cost silver lines, I'd probably have substantially fewer silver lines and fewer vehicles to use. The point is that, even with premium vehicles, premium time, buying packs that have silver lines, and so much more, statistically speaking, after paying for new vehicles and crew costs among other things, I really do not have a ton to show for it in terms of silver lines, especially when considering my relatively good stats. Again, not to beat a dead horse on that. Yes, War Thunder is free to play, but beyond a certain point, if you're not willing to pay real money for some things like premium time, packs, or vehicles, you will find your grind come to a halt where you are stuck with many vehicles that you have researched but do not have enough silver lines to pay for them. Unfortunately for many, that point in game comes when they're reaching around tier 3 or 4, after which point, buying premium time or premium vehicles becomes one of the only viable ways to progress forward with any consistency, unless you're willing to limit yourself by either waiting for free repairs or limiting the types of vehicles that you play so you can play the least expensive to maintain vehicles only. This game is free to play through tier 3, but especially through tier 4, only for those who are good enough to earn tons of silver lines per match, as well as those who use their wagers and boosters effectively to boost their earnings. Simply put, for the vast majority of people playing this game, especially for those who do so casually, consistent progression without paying for something, whether it's premium time, premium vehicles, or again, something else, will be extremely difficult to accomplish. Is it impossible? No. As I said before, even I hardly have a net surplus of funds relative to the amount of matches that I've played, and I typically have at least one premium in most of my usual lineups, plus I've had a premium account for the last 3 plus years non-stop, and for large portions of time before that as well. So yes, this game is free to play, but you're also free to pay if you really want to pro start progressing through the tiers. If nothing else, at least premium time is relatively inexpensive, especially when it's on sale.
that all said thanks so much for watching everyone seriously it means the world to me if you have not done so already please like and subscribe that will really help my channel grow but even just as much please comment below tell me what you guys think about this video i know my last one about if war thunder was pay to win i generated some controversy relative to how many views and comments i get that one had a lot uh, at least thus far so please again let me know in the comments below either way i'm signing out for the night hope you guys are excellent to each other and i'll see you all on the other side take care everyone